whistleblower. <whistles> Big government corruption case. Hello everyone, I'm here with a uh, Victorian lady, Angela Georgianis. She is the sister of the federal politician Steve, Steve Georgianis in Adelaide. I did a video in May of 2020, it's on my YouTube channel, but what Steve Georgianis did, the federal politician for Adelaide, he had the video blocked in Australia, he censored it. It's how criminal he's, what he's been doing, he's been harming his sister and his, his parents who passed away and that video, I'm going to upload that again at the end of this video, and hopefully this video will survive, we'll put it on BitChute and YouTube and Rumble. Mm -hmm. And it's so criminal what he's done to his own sister and his parents, and they not only harm the Australian population in all sorts of horrible, shocking ways, they also harm their own relatives, it's, it's shocking. So. I've covered half an hour from the case from before, which will be at the end of this broadcast, at the end of this video, and Angela's going to talk to give more information from her perspective. Right. Um, since my mother last died in August 2019, Stephen George Annis, Labor Federal MP for Adelaide, put straight away a caveat on the probate. Um, falsifying his name as a Starfields George Annis. Now, that name of Starfields George Annis doesn't exist anywhere, not in the wills, nowhere. We know on his birth certificate he is called Eustace Stephen. So he put the probate to, um, to rev up my fees with the lawyers, unduly and vexatious claims. Um, so, and then as you know, most of these um, estates do never, never see the day and light in the Supreme Court, and we knew this wasn't going to go in the Supreme Court. I was stitched up with those lawyers that uh, we used. Um, the first one was Philip Farlam, and Philip Farlam got in another team um, of lawyers, Nick Isles from Silly Isles. These are all in South Australia. Then they got a beneficial lawyer, which was Judith Creek from Jordan, um, Carpenter and Associates again in Adelaide, and then they got a barrister, which I actually said to them, I don't want to use her, and her name was Rachel, Dr. Rachel Gray. She was actually appointed by the AOP um, as a parole officer. So a, also, Angela was the executor. She had um, advanced care directive over the mother's uh, life, towards the end of her life. Yes. And I covered that in the last video. Um, she was the executor of her mother's will, and there's three judges involved who revoked this will, her as executor, because Stephen's a politician, and he used lawyers and three judges involved, um, revoking her as executor of the will, and um, just completely using corrupt judges to override what the mother wanted. And what, she, what was proven was she didn't want him anywhere near her funeral or anything, so yeah. Mm. Well, as I said, the funeral was just absolutely disgusting what he did. Um, my mum did state with Philip Farnham uh, in the letter that she doesn't want Stephen to take part. She doesn't want her um, well-known brother, Chris Angelopoulos, and Stephen's two adult sons, George Adam Georgianis and Alex Georgianis and especially Steve's ex-wife, Wendy Joy Holden, George Annis, nowhere near the funeral. And in the funeral, um, we had Steve's ex-wife, Wendy, next to the coffin as a bodyguard, smiling when I was coming in. Um, he also had, using taxpayers' money, in the funeral, six federal cops, waiting for myself to have an emotional outburst, as what he's been saying with his lawyers. It didn't happen. Um, again, now with this um, this lawsuit that he has um, initiated for myself, is um, his main aim is to chew up the whole estate and leave me homeless. As he was saying to my mother um, while she was dying, and just you know, this all happened 
when my father died. He couldn't get away with my father because dad used to actually confront him and verbally abuse him. So all their, all their Christmas came at once, him and his family, when my father passed before my mother. Um, he was threatening my mum just after dad died that he's going to put me away um, in Adelaide, which is the park side, I think. The psychiatric um, facility. So he threatened her. While mum was... That's like a death threat because they kill people in those psychiatric um, facilities. We all know like that. he's going to make me um, take my own life with my own hands. This was while my mum was devastated after dad's death and she was very sick. Um, with, well, they said that she had cancer. We really don't know what was going on um, with her health, but she deteriorated. Um, and it's mainly with all the stress that Steve, his children and her, two, her, her siblings did in Adelaide to my mother. Now, with the mediation, it was just a scam. I was forced to sign the papers and I was set up by Nick Isles and Philip Farland. Steve has been using all along on the death certificates and on the probate, this name of Starthios George Annas and on the consent deeds. Um, so he revved up with unduly vexatious claims. As soon as we went into mediation, he had no proof because I, if he did have anything on me, I wouldn't be sitting here um, talking to you right now, Teresa. And he went for the Inheritance Act. Now, we've found the legislation for that. As an MP, he's, he wasn't entitled for that. So we were meant to pay him seven, 370000 And um, we, we said to Nick Isles, we will sell Dad's second property, which he left to myself um, as a gift. But because it was an easy property and a smaller property, um, and to get Stephen out of my hair, Quick, fast, we decided to do that. Now, Steve's lawyers, uh, Norman Waterhouse, and he used Thomas Burke, they were trying to intercept the money, and we said to them, We've got the proof and the evidence that we're going to pay you in 14 days. But on the 12th day, Stephen Georgianus slapped a caveat with his false name of Stathios Georgianus. So I stopped payment. Now, they were banking, I was going to get that caveat in the mail, probably end of the week, but they, the land titles essay sent it to me um, by Express Post from Friday, and I received that on Monday afternoon. So, he was still going to, he was going to get the money, and then he was still going to start this, um, again, this legal uh, process again, just to chew up the, the funds. And he was honestly, he probably thought that I was gonna use Nick Isles or whoever I would have used in Adelaide, he would have done the dirty because Steve gets, that's what Steve does. Um, he uses other people to do his biddings, his dirty biddings. And is it worth about $12 million, you said? Well, is, what, is we've, that... we've found, what we found, what we can find out, yes. yes. And um, the. The, they just used three judges, and the judges. What are the judges' names? Now, Judge Bochner actually signed off my mother's probate and gave me full um, executive rights. And she, when somebody starts a legal proceeding and changes their name, he should have done the name change, and she would have had to sign it off for Steve. Um, to do so, he would have lost his job as an, an, an MP. It didn't happen. Now, through this, I was really shocked because this court case came on my birthday because Steve, as we know, is a big Freemason, Freemason and he uses numbers. He used this on my birthday. So on my birthday at 6.30 that day, I received confirmation from Nick Isles that that Steve Georgianis has brought an application to force the sale of um, Tarragon Street, my land. So they've made me the application, um, the applicant, which I'm not the applicant. And um, Steve, and with this court proceeding all along, it's been Estancios. So Judge Bock and I was dealing with this. So we've brought together, we've had about eight hearings, which were just all ridiculous. Of course, Steve Georgianis was nowhere to be seen. He would never show his face, as I said. That's how bullies and cowards work. Um, he's, he could never ever face me face to face, as what my father used to say. He was just a very big coward. 
And one of the ju uh, judges removed Angela as executor of her mother's will. Which judge did that? Now, this was Judge Bochner. Now, she was conflict of interest from the start. She should not have even taken this case. Uh, Christmas 2022, we had, um, because she didn't want to really do this, um, we had judge, a retired judge, Judge Peter Norman, and he gave the orders. Again, we, we stored this out, and then finally, um, Judge Bochner gave the orders to remove me and to give empathy to this Astathios, which Astathios is nowhere in any of the wills that my, fa my father and mother, our parents, have, have made. Because he's got property in that other name, is that right? We don't know, no, no. We, don't, we don't know what he has. Um, whatever Steve has done is criminal. Um, we know in the past um, he was a taxi driver. He really hardly worked. Um, Mum and Dad actually used to pay for his children's um, upbringing, um, right up to the end, mum documented everything that they did for Steve. Um, but as I said, it all went astray. Uh, Philip Farlam, in the end, did not even give me my mother's file back. We had to write to the Legal Commissioner SA to get it back. And then when we finally did get it back, uh, what Philip, Philip did was just photocopy, photocopy the wheels and the codicils. seals. Again, the Legal Commission um, Board wrote back to me saying there's no wrongdoing, as, as we know. The criminality that I've seen in the Supreme Court in South Australia just goes beyond. Um, I don't think anybody knows the severity of what they're doing. It's just absolutely criminal. And what's the third judge's name? What did he now, do? Now, we actually put now what they've done, um, because they've all been instructed by Steve George Annis, and so it, we know very well Judge um, Bochner has been in the start, this conflict of interest, um, and, so, and so with the retired Judge uh, Peter Norman. Now, we put, uh, they've had Norman Waterhouse, so we had Thomas Burke, I think it was too much for this young lawyer from Norman Waterhouse and he just probably resigned, and then now they've put an older guy from that Norman Waterhouse, which is Stephen Williams. So, Stephen's and Steve Georgianas have um, hand-picked this lawyer to take over my parents' hard work estate because my parents came here, our parents I should say, came here in, in the 50s. Dad came in 1954 to Melbourne and my mother came as a young girl um, in 1957. So this estate, which I would like to say to Steve and George Annas, and he knows very well, unlike Steve that has never worked five minutes in his life, um, they actually sweated blood to, to do this, this small estate that they had and worked very damn hard. And in the 50s, my parents were treated like second-class citizens, we were treated like animals. Some of the stories that my father um, was telling us were horrendous in the 50s and 60s and then moving, transferring himself from Melbourne to Adelaide. Adelaide's a very, very small, very um, Anglican city, um, very racist and as I said, my parents had a very miserable life because they tried to make a life for himself and for myself but as I said it's all gone down the toilet drainage. Now, they've hand-picked this lawyer that um, specialises in guardianship and public trustee. Yeah, outrageous. Um, Mark Is that the Japer. third judge? That yeah, no, that's the solicitor, yeah. Mark Japer, no, the, yeah. um, from a Delta firm. So mm. he's actually now, um, after, because as I said, we had eight hearings. Um, um, so... We, so we, actually, judge, we went for an appeal yes. for her misconduct and with what we found. As I said, we had all the evidence there. They just dismissed everything. It was just they were playing like theatrical stage. It was just so ridiculous. Um, so the judge see, removed Angela as executor of the mother's will and appointed a... Uh, Mark Jagger which is like a, a, a guardian type... Um, administrator. Administrator. Yeah. A, a stranger. Yeah, to administrate this will, and they've gone in and locked the house and in Adelaide. 
Haven't they? Now, they put um, a block do, on the to house. Do, and, to do yeah. this is um, uh, the sole that reasonable Bochner that did that? Judge Bochner. Yeah, what's and the third judge's name of involved? That was the, injun the injunction that we had this week. Now, an injunction that she put an injunction in. Sorry, Angela put an injunction in. Mm -hmm. And to stop this, to stop this, because and we, the, we yeah. have an appeal, so they've actually overridden the appeal. They don't want this appeal to go through. So, but the the uh, you put an injunction in, and the judge uh, threw the injunction out. She put an injunction in to try to stop them selling the house and going into the house and putting a lock on the house and throwing all their personal stuff out. This is the house in Adelaide, their parents' house, and this judge. Uh, basically threw the injunction out. So what was who was that judge that did that? Um, this judge was um, Judge Sam Doyle. Sam Doyle. Mm -hmm. So she tried to stop it with an injunction and Sam Doyle, the judge, threw out the injunction just giving the politician Steve George asks what he wants. That's three judges. It's outrageous. Absolutely disgusting and outrageous that, that what they do to people and their own relatives. Sorry, keep going. Right. So, as I said, they've just overridden it. So this Mark Jadha has written to me twice. Um, um, he also wants to know if there's a, a safe. As we know, Stephen Georgianis has removed the, the jewellery, which um, is in the file of my mother's, um, which, was, which was over $100,000. And they also took um, $16,000 in cash in 2016 in August. Um, as I said, it's, it's horrendous. Our story is absolutely horrendous, what Stephen has done. Now, from day one, he did say that he's going to get me removed as an executor. So now it's been four and a half years, so they've actually um, got to this point illegally and criminality. Um, the principal of this estate was my mother, and by law and by legislation, um, my mother would have had to sign it off. Now, mum's dead, so as I said, it's quite criminal and um, to actually put a certificate of, of application to revoke the grant which we found just now so this was on the 11th this was on the um, 25th of July because Steve works with numbers 25th of July 22 they started the, this court proceedings and this is 25th of July uh, last year 23 they've revoked me as an executor so, so they've actually made me... Of 2023. So this is to make me complicit in a criminal act, an allegedly a criminal um, act. So this is in the South Australian Supreme Court and they falsely, this is fraud, falsely claim an action number PROB-21-00054 the estate of Vicky Georgianis, that's your mother. Our mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Tarragon Street, Mile End. And it says this a certificate of applica application <laughs> to revoke grant. I certify that Angela Georgianis has have applied to the court to revoke the grant of probate made by the court on the 28th of April 2021. So that's a so somebody offence. It's a criminal offence yeah. and fraud. Someone has falsely claimed to be her to do it. To, she's sitting here saying she hasn't done it. And they put a document in to the judge did it or, or the, someone. Or the probate. Um, we found that the, the someone probate registrar is um, somebody named Christine Florenzos. Look, um, Adelaide's a very small country town and the Greek population, the Greek community in Adelaide is absolutely disgusting um, what Steve has Just done clear that she has not done this and someone has fraudulently done it using her name and so it's, yeah, yeah. it's really criminal so we've, we've also yeah. had an interventional order that was granted to me in the Melbourne Magistrate of course it's as we can see it's um, Stephen George Annis not if star feels like he's been using it in the Supreme Court now in the Supreme Court with the appeal um, they've resorted back to his original name not if staff was going to Stephen. Now, with the um, the the, the Melbourne Magistrate, Magistrates Court, we had two hearings. On the third hearing that I went, that I um, uh, went, apparently they put me in the wrong courtroom. On 
this, this was not a, a mistake, this was um, done purposely, so they striped it off. So there's no purpose in doing anything in the courts. Um, and because of who he is um, and his connections, he's doing this. Now, I'm really, um, really, really, really shocked because Steve has, we did grow up together. Uh, from the age of 12, I made a choice never to have anything to do with him of the sexual assault. Um, that he did against That you. he did to me as a four, year, a four and a half year old and a ten and a half year old with his friend Con Retzis, which they are still friends. Um, Con Retzis lives in um, Cairns, I think, in Queensland. Um, so that's why we did the, the AVO, but as I said, it went nowhere and it's just a waste of time trying to, you know, find any justice in the, in the courts. So he should be charged with sexual assault um, of, again, a, of a minor. Isn't that correct? That's right, it is yeah. correct. Um, this would have never come out, but because of what he's done, um, we just can't have our, we, we just can't keep ourselves sealed anymore. Now, here in South Melbourne, again, on the 27th of July, my father and myself were arsoned to be killed. Now, we know very well now, and before my mother died, the last two days, she did say to me, he's responsible for everything. He did everything. Again, Detectives in South Melbourne, they just stopped the investigation. Yeah. Now, with what with Teresa's uh, video, that um, the first video, the, the development that we had, they censored was, the video. He, Stephen and Georgiana censored the video. It's blocked in Australia, but people in other countries can watch it. So it's, it's totally criminal. He just does all this evil stuff, and then censors censors it. It's just yeah, censorship is criminal. Um, with Stephen, um, he he actually got the well. We know now with the development, and we've got proof and evidence because when Teresa did the the video, we knew he was involved. But now we have the evidence, um, and we have the paper trail with Stephen. Um, I when I came back to Melbourne after my mum's death and all that in July two thousand twenty two again. I got arrested by the local police, by Sergeant Bolston. Um, he's the one that they assigned me to him from um, October 2019. Um, and I got arrested, I got detained for two hours for an assault for the builder, Jason Taylor, for next door, which he went bankrupt in 2020. So it was just all bullshit. It was just to, you know, discredit and humiliate me. And Steve's just waiting for me to go off. It's not going to happen, Steve. Um, so they use corrupt judge. He used corrupt judges and corrupt police to, you know, physically assault her or harm her, uh, defame her, and um, you know, try to steal her property and steal the parents' property. It's what a horror story. Yeah, sorry. Keep going. So yeah, well, there's not much I can say about him. All I know is that um, he was a taxi driver. Um, Dad and my mum financed him with everything. Um, then when he when he finished his when he sold his taxi, he became um, an insurance salesperson. We know and we've got evidence with his title. Uh, the house that is in Adelaide, 54. Lowline Street, my land that his ex-wife still lives in there, um, was bought by my mother and father, our parents. Um, on that title, he has caveats because when he was working as an insurance salesperson, um, he would steal people's policies. So that was in the mid-90s. Um, he was going to get arrested um, with the South Australian police. Um, by chance, my dad was passing with his bicycle because dad used to ride a, ride a bicycle and saw the, the police detaining him. So at that time, uh, dad went and paid the South Pole about four and a half thousand dollars, as mum said to me, and had, had him released. But all this has been espunged. So, so the government makes really... money out of criminality as well, that they're just, just as criminal, mm -hmm. so yeah. Anyway. So we know Steve's got no education, no nothing, um, but we know that he's in that role as a federal politician because of his Masonic connection through Masonry. He's been in the Greek, a HEPA, he was um, from 18, 
and he was registered in the Labour Party as an 18-year-old. And it's really funny because both my parents were very extreme rioters. My father's um, hero was George Papadopoulos with the military coup from, from the late 60s to the early 70s. So, as I said, he is a person with a split personality, um, had absolutely no connections with my mother and father. The only thing was, you know, he was like a leech type of thing. Um, and your parents? Using are... my parents, um, yeah. right up to their, to their ends. Um, and your, parents are, in your the... parents are Christian as well, and you're Christian, is that right? Of course, we're orthodoxy. Yeah. And okay. um, as we know, Steve doesn't believe in anything. It's we're really believing the devil, because, um, probably. Uh, Dad would actually say he's not divorcing his wife because he knows he's going to make us happy. He was divorced and um, he was still denying it to my mother. As soon as my parents died, he's bought his new mistress, which um, we went when I was 10 and he was 17, 18. We went to live in Athens to, in Greece to get Steve away from his bad company. Mm. Um, and he met this woman, Barbara, um, she, we had a cousin, my cousin's wife worked in Citibank in uh, a very, one of the affluent suburbs in, um, in Athens and he met Barbara at the time, I think she was, she's a Romanian, Bulgarian um, and she was a tea lady in the Citibank branch and um, Steve was going to go into the military because he was at the age of 18 so my parents shipped him off. Um, back to Australia, which was the, the, the worst mistake they could have done. And um, she dropped him, and now she's come back into his life. And um, we, we hear he's um, remarried, and he's left the property that my parents bought from him, that my mum's got this all documented, um, to his ex-wife, which my parents completely loathed, loathed um, Wendy George Allen. So she's living in mum and dad's hard work, um, I think one of the important things to note is that how they use their power to do whatever they want and they use their power to do whatever they want and they use corrupt judges to do what they want and corrupt police to do what they want and they harm the general population and they harm their own relatives. It's they're just disgusting people like they should all be jailed anyway so you know it's just criminal what they do. They got the worst people go into politics usually, don't you think? It's like um, well, a, well, what, what we've um, we need much better, much better Steve, politicians. Yes, yeah. yeah. The other thing is with the development, we um, have evidence that Steve is either you know involved. Um, so because of the bullying and the threats and the abuse and physical abuse that I have um, obtained with the developers, they have accessed my property, and that's why. The legislation is that you cannot access your neighbour's property unless you've got consent. So they haven't got consent with my property. Um, that's why they use the South Melbourne Police to bully myself outside, of, to bully myself from my, you know, from my home. So that was from October 2019 after Mum died and we did the 40 days and came back. I was harassed by the South Melbourne Police, so I left. Came back in 2022 with the fear of that I'm going to get arrested. So I was couch surfing until July, I think it was the, the 5th of July 2022. I was arrested for two hours, um, all Steve's um, doing. And the week before, we won't mention the developer's name because they actually obtained an AVO against me. We had all the evidence to prove all this, this abuse and the destruction of my home. They had the scaffolding on my home, on top of my roof without my consent. Um, and the magistrate, which he was just absolutely disgusting, Malcolm Thomas, actually got, after lunchtime, he got vile and threatened me with an arrest and got an AVO for this developer and his wife that we've never seen before. Now, if you see this building next door to me, they are claiming it's a family home, a four story. It's absolutely ridiculous of um, what's happening. Um, Port Phillip Council are involved greatly with this project, turning a, a blind eye, VBA, 
work safe, everybody's turning a blind eye to this um, project. The workers were on my roof shouting all my personal information. So we know that Steve and we've got the proof now. We won't go into it because we've got AVOs, um, a developer and the wife, which we really, we like, if we see her in the street, we won't even recognise who she is, got the AVO against me. Because as I said, um, the, the, notion, the notion for this um, arrest was that I, you know, have a nervous breakdown and I and I flee my house like I did in October 2019. It's not going to happen. Um, and, she, and if I'm sure Steve will watch this, well, what you've done, Steve, is you've made me very, very focused now, and I've done a lot of work, I've done a lot of work onto you, and I've done a lot of work with the legislations. So you have actually improved my character. That's what you've done, and I would love you to prove what you're saying about myself because the lies have become so big, um, it's just absolutely, it's mind-boggling. Um, well, they just want to defame everyone as well and lock everyone up and use right. as much uh, police violence against people mm. and, and corrupt judges and all this sort of thing. It's just disgusting. It's, yeah. The eight hearings that we've had and the, the, the one that we had yesterday, Wednesday, um, the 17th of January, is nowhere to be seen. But um, for the ABOs, for, for here in Melbourne, he had to reappear. So he had his face on a screen because he had no choice. And the ABO that they got, the builders got an ABO against a, the developer. Her, because her house is next door to this property development. It's massive. It's just a monstrosity on this street. And there's all this massive, big monstrosity. Um, and it's interfering, they're interfering with her property and threatening her. They've got, the magistrate gave them an ABO. It's just incredibly corrupt. It's, they shouldn't be allowed to give ABOs for things like that. It's supposed to be for people, you know, in domestic violence where one partner's fleeing the other partner because of violence and, and this sort of thing. And <coughs> they shouldn't be able to use a ABOs in the way that they do, don't reckon? They shouldn't be allowed. There's no law. The um, the corruption in this country it just stinks. It absolutely stinks. Um, uh, look, you know, I'm in the middle of this corruption. Um, he has used the South Melbourne Police against me. We've been in a lot of life-threatening um, situations. We'll never call triple zero. We'll never go to the South Melbourne station. They destroyed my um, property. They um, smashed my fence, my little picket fence. I came back, it was just on the eve of Melbourne Cup and it was all on the ground. Um, even when we had the AVOs that I, because I got my AVOs granted first for the developer and the builder, um, they were still doing things to my house, whatever. We've never ever gone to the South Melbourne Police. They have used the South Melbourne Police against me um, to get me out of my home. And they also, I think I spoke about it in the first video, which yes, will be at the yeah. end. We had the which harassment. Will be at the end yeah. of this. Yeah. But um, they they firebombed your house with you and your father. That was in, it. in in July, twenty seventh in two thousand and twelve. We know. Um, if, as I said, before my mum died, um, she knew it was Steve. They did it to um, Jan to Horst in Western Australia. He had political writing all over his house, a big three-storey, four-storey house, three, sorry, three-storey house. And um, they firebombed his house too. That was the government did it. And uh, yeah, and they did that to that friendly Geordie too. He was, his house was firebombed. It was by the government people. Um, they tried to kill him. It's attempted murder when you do things like that to people. It's it's horrifying. It's allowed by the politicians now. Everybody knows in Parliament with what Steve's doing. Everyone's keeping quiet. Um, mm. There's more to Stephen. There's much more to Stephen. Mm. Um, as I said, the, the corruption is just too big, in, mm. and especially now in my case in the Supreme Court in South Australia with um, Judge Bochner. Um, she should step down with what she's done. She's been instructed by Stephen. Um, everybody was. Philip Farlam, uh, Nick Isles, now Norman Waterhouse, Thomas Burke, Stephen Williams, and this new Mark Japper from, our, uh, from a Delta firm. Um, what he's doing, and he's actually, 
He's actually gone into our home, into our property, and taken over my possessions. He's actually, he's done a very good thing because he's written it down in the document, uh, which, you know, he should be deregistered because this is now break and entry uh, and abuse of, you know, of power. Um, well, the judge goes, an appeal. a stranger, yep. uh, administra a stranger. administration was... over their, her mother's estate. That's shocking. He was handpicked by Stephen Georgianis and um, his, his um, legal team. So this person has been picked by Stephen Georgianis um, to go into our home. His but he's a stranger to you, I mean. Well, like, of course yeah, he is. Yeah. They all are. And as I said, we've made a choice. And I think everybody does know this in the Greek community, that I had nothing to do with Stephen as a 12-year-old. And even with his children, we had very little to do with them. Very little to do with them. So, yeah. As I said, this should there should be an internal investigation into this matter in the Supreme Court. Mm. And there should be... Um, an investigation with the development next door to my um, property. Mm. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, you Teresa. Yeah. We have a little bit of evidence to add, and that is uh, there was a hearing in the South Australian Supreme Court in Adelaide, 2023, uh, the August, and there was about 45 people attended, witnesses, and I was one of them. I was at that hearing. It was with Judge Bochner. And um, the gentleman that was helping Angela, he spoke to the judge and the judge stood up in the hearing and walked out. So he, um, we had the advocate, Derek Bullock, um, he actually charged the judge and she walked out and he was approached by the sheriffs. Um, but they, they dismissed um, Stephen Georgianis, the alias ghost that is going by the the name of Stathios Georgianis. Well, he's using two names. Um, he's using two names. His so. his barrister, Mark Douglas Murray, uh, was chauffeured special specifically with the um, the sheriff. So they actually took him and took him where the judge stands and took him through the judge's chambers. I don't think that has ever happened in a Commonwealth country. I mean it that's ever happened in another courtroom so it's so he's so steve georgianis the her brother who's the federal politician for adelaide labor yeah politician. they were uh, whatever party who cares they're all criminals and um they 11 sheriffs in the room there were about 11 and they took his barrister Is his mark name? mark uh, douglas murray mark douglas murray they took him through the judge's back door yeah, that's what to the, protect him. That's what they, they brought him into the room as well, didn't they? they? they yes, they chauffeured the, the, him in the, the, the room. Yeah. Um, the security staff, the, the court staff, took him into the room. This barrister, the politician's barrister, and then they took him out of the room through the judge's back door. Now, these politician, her brother, using three judges, court staff, barristers, yeah. and lawyers to destroy his sister. It, 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 using power, government power, political power to destroy his own sister. They would destroy the p whole public, but they would even destroy their own relatives. How disgusting and evil and criminal are these politicians? Disgusting. And judges uh, just doing what they want. And all these court staff uh, helping the lawyer go through the back door, the judge's back door. It's just so shocking and criminal and corrupt. And um, just after that finished, um, at five o'clock, this judge actually gave us the orders um, against myself uh, for Steve. Actually, no, she gave empathy to this Estathios Georgianus that does not exist. This name is not in any of my parents' will and um, gave me the orders. So, so now they've given that judge, the judges, three judges gave... August when this happened in 2023, we got, um, I was granted an appeal. which is going to happen February the 9th this year, tw uh, 2024. And before Christmas, this person, a Delta legal, Mark Peter Jaffer, Jaffer ha wrote to me saying for me to get in touch with him. Now, I will not get in touch with this person because he is actually working for Steve Georgianis, the federal MP for um, Adelaide. So they didn't even 
um, appoint an independent administrator. So it's this one here. And as you can see, he's actually, um, do, he's actually raising money for the homeless, which he's going to make me homeless. So isn't it funny? It's this one here, Mark Peter Jabha. So he's actually written to me that he's actually um, handpicked what he's going to give to me. And this is all my mother's uh, personal possessions, furniture, my uh, furniture, my personal clothing, because as you can see, this development next door, which they have approached on my property, they've taken the firewall, and we've got the same cladding as what happened in the Grenfell Tower. So we're about to go up in flames. And we've also got that RAAC, that compound, which is all over this building. And as we know, and we've got evidence that Steve Georgianis is behind this development. So this person from a Delta Legal, Mark Peter Jaffer has gone in. We wrote to him because we got an injunction two weeks ago, which the the judge Sam Samuel Doyle absolutely ignored my um, injunction and handed it over to the, to these people because of who Mr. Steve Georgianis is, and he, he's actually going because we've said to him not to touch our personal belongings, and he said no. By the fifth of um, February, he's going to remove everything so while, there's a, while there's an appeal. So yeah. he's so not going to give me my clothing or anything, mm -hmm. and he wants me to be in touch with him. Now, we know that this is a setup because whatever Steve Georgianis, M federal MP, does, he sets us up, and he always uses the police against me. He's done so much ever since our mother died to try and get me. We were arrested in July 2022 outside my home with the police. Um, as I said, all he does is use the police. So this is another setup. So he's actually going to throw our personal possessions and my mother's personal clothing and everything out or throw it in the bin. And how and the judges is, can give Mark so, ja a stranger, Mark Jappas, authority over her mother's will, whereas in the video you'll see towards the end how he, her mother specifically stopped, told Stephen Georgianis to stay away from her funeral was to stay away and what he did was so criminal there and now these judges have given a, a complete stranger authority over her own mother's will which is just incredibly outrageous it's just so shocking mm. yeah. and this one here is um, Thomas Burke was their lawyer from Norman Waterhouse which is in Adelaide this one here Stephen Branley Williams is Stephen George Annis's uh, lawyer and that, that has hand-picked this one here Mark Jacob so these are actually, he's invaded, he's actually gone into our home and he's actually, this is an invasion of our privacy and this is actually just, there's no words to describe it, it's just theft, all because of Stephen Georgianis. So we've got our personal papers there, documents, we've got so many, um, because we've, my parents lived in that house for 55 years, so there's so much of, um, you know, um, memories and everything that this person as you can see a Delta which is actually raising money for the homeless so he's going to take over and they also said these three lawyers that there's not enough in the estate so the house that they're sort of um, thinking that it's going to go for a million so the a million dollars is not enough to pay all these three lawyers so the irony is that Steve chews up the estate because he really doesn't care. He just wants, as he said to mum, he's out there to destroy me. Because he's already got, he's already worth about $12 million or something like that, isn't he? Is yeah, well, what we, we can find. And he could have dual citizenship as well because he's using two names. We're not sure about that, but it's possible. Isn't um, that possible? Yes, it is. So look, we've yeah. been everywhere. Every, every um, MP here in Australia knows about Stephen. Um, even the senators, the right wing, which is really, there's no such thing as right wing, it's all, you know, um, left distraction. Right wing, no, no Everybody knows thing. about it in Parliament, it's Attorney people. General Mark Dreyfus, um, Anthony Albanese, but no one is willing to do anything. So this person, Stephen George Annis, Federal MP for Labor, um, a taxi driver that was as corrupt as, and we know very well why he got into politics and how he got into politics. And before he got into politics, he was well known in the Greek community in Adelaide, taking him with people's insurance policies. And he's got a caveat on his property that his ex-wife, Wendy Georgianis, is living in the house. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
I'm at the house of Angelia Georgianis, 181 Gladstone Street, South Melbourne. There's a big corruption issue going on in regards to her brother Stephen Georgianis, the federal politician for Adelaide, and he's trying to kill his sister by having her locked up, drugged to death, and steal her property. This is her property, the title of the property. These developers are involved. The council is very corrupt. I have a list of names, developers' names, and politicians' names who are corruptly involved in this case regarding the Georgianas. And I'll put all the details in the description of the video and film it um, later on. This is a horrible government corruption case involving the federal member for Adelaide, Stephen Georgianas. The footage you've just seen is the house of his sister, Angela Georgianis. Her property is the house, 181 Gladstone Street, South Melbourne. And the development property you saw next door is 179 Gladstone Street, South Melbourne. Uh, the allegation is that he, Stephen Georgianis, the federal politician, facilitated in the government drugging to death of his parents and also threatened to kill he has on three occasions threatened to kill his sister and steal her home, that 181 Gladstone Street, her South Melbourne home. The evidence I have in relation to the home, I have all these documents as evidence, and there's a lot more documents involved as well. So these are just the basic ones. Here we have a development advert, realcommercial.com.au, 179 Gladstone, South Melbourne. Development sites and land is what the ad says. Boutique permit approved South Melbourne development site permit approved development. Excellent South Melbourne location, outstanding boutique opportunity. 179 Gladstone Street, South Melbourne. The first developer for this property was William Rupert Holden. The second developer was Scott Crow, And the third developer and current developer is David and Annie Breen. In a letter to Angela Georgianis, who owns the house next door that you saw in the footage, that's 181 Gladstone Street, uh, from Mr and Mrs Breen, the current developer, or the current owners of the property, who are paid uh, Ian Kidston of All Extension Design Service to develop the property. The letter to her, 18th of June 2019, some of the letters says, we can fully understand your very grave and real concerns with regard to the approval and, intend and intended construction of the original seven storey high density apartment building and the subsequent demolition of the original house that stood on the land at 179 Gladstone Street. Now they're claiming that that's a home that they're building, a family home in the letter. Uh, they want to minimise her concerns as we embark on the construction of our home. To that end, I would like to highlight a few points with regards to ourselves and the home we intend to build. We purchased the land subsequent to the demolition. We had nothing whatsoever to do with the previous development of the, the previous development or the developer. We purchased the land with the hope of building a single family home rather than an apartment development. And as you know, we have subsequently gained council approval for this home. Three, we fully accept that a modern and large home may not necessarily be to your liking, but we ask you to at least consider the benefit of the intended design versus the original. Our house is obviously considerably smaller in height and depth, and the amenity is improved as it will be occupied by a single family as opposed to the previous approved plans for seven storey, 16 apartments, with a total of 25 bedrooms and 10 car parks being approved by the council, and the advert, advert, advertising in relation to it is, um, synonymous with the development of apartments. It doesn't look like it's a home at all, and uh, contrary to the claims by the, the owner. Also, the builder on the site, uh, Angela's been threatened by the police, the South Melbourne police, who need to back off, and the fault is with her brother, Steve Georgianis, the builder, who is, in this letter from the owner, it admits that Ian Kidston of All Extension Design Service is designing the home, uh, designing the apartment block, 
and the builder, Mr. Jason Taylor of TJ Builders. He's the man that looked like, uh, looks like that was the man that was in the footage you saw at the beginning. Now, there's two letters also from the, two letters from Ian Kidston, all extension design service, regarding a, a building permit has been issued for the construction of a house at 179 Gladstone Street, South Melbourne. It's clearly not a house, it's a seven or eight storey apartment block. In this same letter, we also supplied you with details of the insurance cover for your property during construction. This letter is dated the 27th of September 2019. I write now with regard to gaining access to your property for the purpose of having Metro Spec Inspection prepare a report, a dilapidation report. And an earlier letter, 13th of September 2019, Please find and close a certificate of currency for insurance as required under the provisions of the Act relating to protection works. A building permit has been issued subject to materials being available. We are expecting to commence works on or around 23rd of September. So they have insurance cover. It's been approved by the council, but when Angela contacts the council to complain uh, about the damage to her property, they smash the CCTV footage They've damaged other parts of her property. All the council says that is that unless a wall falls down or her wall falls down, they don't want to know about it. They don't want to hear anything. So they don't want to hear about anything. So, so you see how the politicians use all their corrupt contacts to facilitate development sites and they threaten homeowners. They're threatening her with the police over a fence that fell over as a result of their construction, but they have insurance com coverage. They have admitted they have insurance coverage, so therefore the South Melbourne police can go away and leave her alone and tell the builder and the people behind trying to charge her with something in relation to the building is that they have insurance cover. So if there's any sort of claim that they want to make, they can make it through their own insurance. Also, I've been told that the state politician, um, Tom, Tom Costantinus, which is a state Labor politician, this is all in South Australia, um, and Martin Foley in Victoria, involved in a state politician, involved in um, threatening her in relation to, and threatening, threatening her in relation to this development, and uh, that they, they, allow these developments to go ahead at all costs to all other homeowners on the street. It looked like to me that they were trying to destroy the street when I went down there because they had tried to buy out all the people on the street and they wanted some big massive development down there, but they've only secured this one site at 179. So there's other politicians involved in threatening people and corruptly facilitating the um, development. So for probably through bribes because that's how they do it they get they bribe the politicians and the and the development goes through and then they threaten the homeowners in the area with the police if they make complaints or um you know making complaint trying to protect their own property there's damage to her property so the police should be charging the the builder the builders and owners of that illegal seven-story development they're claiming it's a family home in the letter but clearly you can see in the footage that it's not a family home. It's seven or eight storeys and it, and it looks like apartments. And the previous plans related to the previous plans related to approval by the council of apartment style, seven storeys, 16 apartments with a total of 25 bedrooms and 10 car parks. So there's contradictions in their own letter as to what exactly is being developed there they claim it's a family home but clearly the evidence is that it isn't the next part of the narrative in regards to this case is a letter 29th of july 2019 from vicky georgianis which is the mother who died on the 18th of august 2019 her father died this is angela's father and stephen there's just a brother and a sister the Stephen, the federal, is the federal politician who's been threatening the sister. The father died on the 29th of October 2017. There were 12 police sent to the house when he died. He died in the home and they didn't have an autopsy. So he was 
the son went in there on his own with the police and um, that was it and he was, and he was dead. So that's already suspicious and there's no autopsy done. His father was, uh, her father was also moved by nine police under the instructions of Steve um, from a Calvary aged care facility to Royal Adelaide Hospital in June of 2017 when the mother, Vicky Georgianis, wanted her husband home. So you see how these politicians are using the police all the time. They kept him in the government system at the hospital to be drugged. Um, they have, there's even a Royal Commission proving that they've killed a lot of elderly people with the drugging, the forced government drugging. So he did everything possible in this period to the father and the mother to keep him, um, them with the drug injecting doctors to basically have them um, facilitate in their early death. This letter from the lawyer, Philip Farlam Legal Consulting. Also, I've been told that the instruction came from the mother as early as May of 2019. So the lawyer didn't do a very good job when the instruction's given and they take weeks to get the letter out. The letter states that the enduring power of attorney dated 18th of November 2008 and the enduring power of guardianship dated 18th of November 2008 was revoked. It had given him guardianship and his sister, both of them the rights to determine, um, to make decisions in the event of incapacity. But uh, Mrs. Georgianis, Vicky Georgianis, always had capacity. She did not lose capacity. But the, um, both the guardianship documents were revoked. For your records, I enclose a copy, I enclose a copy of the re revocation of the 2008 power of attorney. And the date on here is um, the 8th of July, 2019, where Vicky Georgianis made an advanced care directive to take over that power of attorney, which she revoked. The date is the 8th of July. On the, in the letter, but the instruction I've been told came as early as May. On the execution by your mother of an, of an advanced care directive, 8th of July 2019, the advanced care directive that your mother executed on the 8th of July 2019 appointed your sister Angela the sole substitute decision maker for your mother in the event that she loses capacity. I'm instructed to notify you that any authority you may have had in relation to your mother's financial affairs whether by the 2008 power of attorney or otherwise, is revoked. Further, the advanced care directive that your mother executed on the 8th of July 2019 does not currently empower the making of decisions on behalf of your mother because she still has legal capacity and may never so operate any apparent or purported authority or interest that may have been ascribed to or claimed by you under the power of guardianship the 2008 as your mother's prospective guardian or substitute decision maker is no longer available, is no longer appropriate. For the avoidance of doubt, your mother's request, your mother requests that you notify any organisation or service provider who by your actions has you recorded as having authority on your mother's behalf or who communicates with you in relation to your mother or her affairs or her affairs that you do not have any authority from your mother to receive information or give directions in relation to her or her affairs i'm instructed that your doing so will your i'm instructed that your doing so will give your mother peace of mind and will be greatly appreciated by her finally there are some additional matters that your mother would appreciate my communicating with you about which are of a personal nature now these documents were revoked Advanced Care Directive was given solely to the sister, Angela, on the 8th of July, 2019. And this is what he did. And there's more as well after this. Well, this is what he did leading up, some of the things he did leading up to this. He stole $11,500 from his father's garage in 2016. $100,000 worth of jewellery has gone missing from that family home. This is what Stephen did. He stole a title of land in Greece, which was designated by her father for Angela. There are legal documents missing from her South Melbourne home. And he also had his mother's bank statements sent to himself via his lawyer, Norman Waterhouse Law Firm, from the ANZ Torrensfield between June and August of 2019. 
So in the last hours, uh, last months of her death, after this was revoked, he had her ANZ bank statement sent to him via his lawyer, Norman Waterhouse Law Firm. The police can get evidence for that. Also, the, there was a firebomb thrown at the at Angela's South Melbourne home on the 27th of July 2012, where she was present and her father. So the father and the daughter were at the house and there was a firebomb thrown at the house at 181 Gladstone Street, South Melbourne. And she's been harassed by the police of South Melbourne over this development. There was also, he, the father had a fall at Flora McDonald Retirement Community and Angela believes it's because he was being drugged by the government there as well. I missed that bit out. There was a response by the lawyer, Stephen's lawyer, after the guardianship documents were revoked, the enduring power of guardianship documents were revoked, and the advance care directive set up by the mother to the sole legal decision-making of the daughter only. The, law the lawyer sent a letter back um, referring to a letter dated 12th of August 2019. So even though these instructions were given back as early as May, possibly as early as May, but definitely as early as the 8th of July of 2019, the lawyer didn't send them off until the 12th of August. So these lawyers are criminals. They just take people's money and they let them suffer and die and get threatened by other people. It's disgusting. He says in the letter, the lawyer says on behalf of Stephen Georgianis, that he doesn't want to deal with these issues, that any of these issues, Stevens, this is exactly what the letter says, it's dated the 13th of August 2019, and it's in relation to that letter, which was actually ended up being dated the 12th of August 2019, that's when it was sent. This letter was dated the 12th of August, but the draft letter is the 29th of July. I refer to your letter dated 12th of August 2019, on behalf of your client, Mrs. Vicky Georgianis, Stephen's, Steve's mother, which letter Steve has provided me. Steve has instructed me to write to you in response to the request in the final paragraph of your letter to advise that any correspondence, including matters of a personal nature, that Vicky would appreciate you communicating to Steve should be directed through Norman Waterhouse Lawyers, Propriety Limited, Mark, for my attention. Please note, unless I later indicate otherwise Steve has instructed he does not want to be contacted directly in relation to these matters other than through me or my firm. So he didn't have want to. The mother wanted him out of the picture and he didn't want to know about it only through the lawyer. He didn't want to be told, basically. Now, there we have a lot. Um, we have another very interesting letter from Vicky Georgianis. Dated the 21st of August 2019. Again, his her own lawyer, Philip Farlam Legal Consulting, got these letters out very late. And this uh, lady has actually already passed away. Um, he refers to the date of the instruction given 8th of July 2019. So according to her letter from the lawyer, it's the 8th of July 2019 is the earliest date that she gave these instructions. Vicky Georgianis deceased. I write to you on the delicate subject of Mrs. Vicky Georgianis' clearly expressed wishes as regards her funeral and those who she wishes to and wishes not to participate in the hope that your client may, one, abide those wishes and two, assist in others abiding those wishes, assist in others abiding those wishes insofar as your client may have an influence and an ability to assist in that regard. I'm instructed that on the 8th of July 2019, specifically on the occasion when Vicky Georgianis executed the advance care directive I referred to in my letter to your client of 12th of August 2019, it was explained to Mr. Clear Fast Fang, the legal practitioner, witness to the execution of the advance care directive by Mr. George, that uh, it was assisting Vicky on that occasion that Vicky's wishes strongly held were as follows. A. I do not want my son to have anything to do with my end-of-life funeral arrangements. This is quoted Vicky Georgianis. I want him to come as a guest just like an outsider. I do not want his wife to attend as this is 
as this was my husband's wish as well, neither his two children. If I pass, I do not want Stephen or his children to come to my house when with the mourners that when with the mourners, what our Greek tradition is that leads to the service. And C, I do not want Stephen, his sons and grandsons, and Chris Angelopoulos, who is her brother, Chris Ovandali Dimitri Angelopoulos, who is the brother's son, to go near my coffin. My son's wife, I do not want her anywhere near my funeral, nowhere. In the circumstances, your client is requested to honour as his mother's dying wishes by abiding himself and requesting that others refer to his family do likewise. I should say that there are other instructions conveyed on the 8th of July that I may become appropriate to convey, but which I do not currently have instructions. So there was other issues as well to be brought up. So what did he do? He was told to stay away. Oh, I've got photos of people here. Let me show you. That's him there and the wife. That's the two sons. Okay, that's Stephen Georgianus. Was told to stay away. Was told the wife was to stay, well, the ex-wife was to stay away. His sons were to stay away. And the brother was to stay away. This developer, this rich developer, Chris Angelopoulos in Adelaide, who was in the paper recently, big, big developer. This is government mafia. This is what this is, government mafia. There was some article written about it, but it was, uh, I couldn't read it because you had to pay subscription to get, to get it. And the wife, ex-wife or wife here, is not to go, not to attend, not to go near the coffin, not to go to the wake uh, beforehand or after. The uh, brother... Uh, this one, sorry, this is the son, Chriso Vanderly Angelopoulos, is uh, Chris Angelopoulos' son, and Dimitri Angelopoulos, which is Jim Angelopoulos, the mother's other brother. He was not to go. Okay, and this man also molested Angela when she was a child, and so did... So did uh, so did the brother Stephen. He molested his sister when she was a child, and uh, so rapist and also threatened to kill her. So he was told in a letter by the mother not to go, not to go near the coffin, and that um, not to have anything to do with the end of life or her end of life funeral arrangements. And he was to go as an outsider on his own, without without the people, other people in his family. But this is what they did. This is actually what he did. What Stephen did. He showed up with six federal police. He showed up to the funeral with six federal police. Three were in uniform, at the front with him, and three at the back. He had the funeral director, Peter Elberg's funerals assistant. Christina put Angela at the back of the room. He had the priest deliver a speech written by himself. That's Father Michael Saromatis. So he wrote he wrote a speech and he had the priest deliver it. And Stephen took approximately seventy people from the funeral to the Britannia Hotel uh, for a wake. And 15 of the people at the funeral went with Angela to the wake building, which was behind the church. He said three times to his mother before she died, and I quote here, on three different occasions, uh, he said to his mother, I will get Angela locked up in a psychiatric facility where she will kill herself and I'll take her South Melbourne home. He's also put two caveats on the will. Of the of the mother to block the will, but uh, which you know just because he's a politician, they're letting him do it, and uh, obviously she's left him nothing because uh, you know she didn't even want him at it, at her own. She didn't even want him at her own funeral, so you know he's just wanting the money to be gobbled up by all the lawyers.
I mean, this is why they do that. And they shouldn't be able to do that anyway. So clearly he's threatening the sister. Her life is in danger, you know, and when they lock people up in those um, those sick government facilities, they do drug them to death. That's how they kill politicians and their government workers. They kill with a gun, which is a toy. This is a toy, okay. It's a demonstration item. They kill with a gun and they kill with a needle. That's what politicians throughout the world do. In Australia, they do it and they do it throughout the world. They kill with the needle and they kill with the gun. They kill more people with the needle, actually, with psych drugs and ECT, and they want to kill people with the vax as well, which they've been doing that too. So that's what they threaten people with, the killing, the needle, with the death doctors, and they use the police. It's like a government mafia, political mafia. This is how they are, and this is why they have to be jailed. This man has to be jailed. He's disgusting. He basically facilitated the early death of his parents. He stole from his parents. He stole from his sister. He wants to steal her home. He wants to kill her in a government facility. And they do this. They do this all the time. They do it to their own relatives as well as to just general people in society. They are sick, violent people who have to be jailed. Liberal, Labor, the Greens and the Nationals, they have to be jailed. They have to be banned from ballots forever. Not, they're not allowed to go on the ballot. The AEC management, you cannot put these criminals on the ballot. They have to have all their wealth confiscated and put in a, in a national compensation fund for their victims. We've got some other photos here. This is the mother's sister who betrayed the mother, I uh, have been told. And some other predators involved, described as predators. Vula and Anopolis, who I've been told gave drugs to the mother, poison in her food, Harassment, spying, stalking, taking photos and documents. This is all believed to be done by Stephen. And some other predators involved here. Vicky, Georgia, Coppolis. She got the police onto her mother. How dare they threaten people with the police? They're disgusting. And um, another one stalking and screaming at the sister. Uh, you know, stealing her mail, stealing... Um, just, yeah, stealing things, stalking and stealing from the mailbox and uh, all sorts of disgusting things. So there you have it. There's more information, but this is a disgusting, violent case of a politician using his political power and his wealth to just destroy family members as well as, obviously, people in society. And these ha they have to be jailed. They have to be locked up. They are dangerous they are psychopaths. They use their power to violently harm people. And we have to stand up to them. We are the 99%. The public must stand up to them and demand that these political people and the government people be jailed. When we have our protests on the 1st of July, they have to, they're not invited. The government is not invited. You need to stay away from us. We have a right to freedom and rights to express ourselves and to demand that these political people and government people be jailed. This woman could die. Her life is in danger. Her South Melbourne home is being destroyed by this corrupt development and threats by the police. She cannot go to her own home. She has to live somewhere else. And it's enough is enough. This is long overdue that these politicians have to be punished for what they've done and the government people involved have to be punished as well. Guy, you corrupt criminal, licensed poofter. How much money have you stolen?